how do you deal with things like like the fact that uh your soil is extremely it's there's a lot of clay and there's not it's not as fertile as other people's farms you know yeah, so we don't live in a valley we don't live in a real nice uh river valley or ag valley so we have a lot of shale clay soils um and it was farmed corn on corn on corn and soybeans forever so uh, mostly right now we're relying on growing a lot of forage trying to return that carbon to the ground and trying to add as much uh, chicken manure, pig manure. So we look at our feed coming in as carbon, basically, to build organic matter in in the top of that, uh, uh, you know, clay soil, which we think we can turn into a much more loose, you know, organic matter laden soil rather than uh, compacted nastiness, which it is from from uh, conventional ag. Okay. <laughs> We're trying to come up with sort of a, you know, a mid-Atlantic version of, of those, uh, you know, Italian, those really cool ecosystems, and also hopefully produce, you know, some good food for us in the meantime. So, eventually, we don't ever want to be orchard We can't, buddy. We can't. This is at my brother's farm. So this is, if you can see here, it's like a greenhouse. And then in the winter time, what happens is they heat. This is where the brooders are. So all the young chickens are in here before they go out on pasture. And they use the heat from from this, and it's trapped in the greenhouse. And then here is where they're raising the young tilapia. And then it moves into the pond up here as they get bigger. And then the chickens get bigger here before they move out on the pasture. So they use the heat from this. Um, it's protected by the greenhouse. And then they have a warm pond for the wintertime. This is just one about 10 acres of North Mountain Pastures. We're at Porktoberfest 2014. There's their turkeys for Thanksgiving. They rotate daily basis. We'll just keep moving along here. Looks awesome. the small houses at that point and we had about 15 of them uh, so we would pull 15 15 little houses around and then put these five gallon buckets on top for water and feed the trays every time and pretty much every time you fed the trays they would maul you like the, the chickens were just starving all the time and they're in these and they were in these pens in these shelters because we like I said we you know I'd come out some days and I'd have I'd have uh, like uh, you know, a possum or a raccoon got in and killed everyone in the whole in the whole shelter, right? So I'd come out and you you know imagine coming out and seeing bodies everywhere. You know, that's that's the predator problem that we have coming here. Um, so we started building these. Uh, actually, that hoop house over there was the first one we built. Um, and we went from we went from just pipes here with a little cross brace to those I beams, which the I beams torque real bad. This one now, so now we have the I beams attached to our diagonal brace, and then we actually pull with the skid loader from the diagonal brace, so that the only torque we get is uh, this is all in compression here, and, and it's pulling you know in this direction. This got bent because we hit a tree stump. So, <laughs> um, but this has been the best one by far in terms of like staying together and, and uh, being solid so I you know the nice thing about these versus those little ones is these will last us 
20 years, and these, those other ones will, you know, last. they lasted me two seasons, and I was rebuilding them and rebuilding them. And now I have to maintain, you know, three or four of them instead of maintaining 15 of them. So our goal is to have, uh, like, two to three of these in every field so we can use them for farrowing. Uh, we can use them, uh, like, for, for, for loading pigs out to the butcher. So, don't, you know, when you when you pasture-raise animals, you've got to take them to the butcher at some point, right? And so when I've got 120 pigs out in the woods, I either have to run 120 pigs back in and sort out the four who I'm taking and run the other 116 back out, or I've got to convince those four that they really want to come with me somehow. And usually that means taking a trailer out there, saying, hey, here's some really good stuff, jump on the trailer. And so then you get, you know, the most willing ones, and the ones you don't want to go get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So these are nice because we can have, we can bring a whole bunch of pigs into here, pull the trailer up to it, and load out from these. So they're also really versatile. And if we really wanted to, we could turn them into a greenhouse in the winter, cover them in clear plastic, and actually use them for, for growing if vegetables. Had, like all the free time in the world. Yeah, right. But what, <laughs> what we actually use them for in the winter is we line up large square bales. So I'm talking about hay bales like this tall. Uh, imagine a frame. Uh, as, you know, as big as this chicken tractor, framed out in, in that uh, square bales. And then we put the, the, whole, the whole shelter on top of the square bales. And then our pigs live in there in the winter. So it's insulated sides with those hay bales. It's, they've got shelter on top of them. And then we actually put all of our compost from the air. You can see why that, those lines of compost are up there. It's because we're lining it up to, to make heat inside this, these shelters then for the pigs. The pigs can kind of lay in the compost, they love to root through there, and they can snuggle up against the hay bales and be, you know, more comfortable than being uh, just outside. Uh, and also, I think, more comfortable than being on concrete. Because I, I take a digging bar uh, every two or three days, and I go through there and I pour grain down into the, to the bottom of the compost so that they root down through and keep the compost pile hot for the whole winter. So I've been out there, you know, like this past year when it was real cold, January 15th. I have a video on YouTube showing it. I'm digging down through there, and you can see these pigs are just going crazy, and it's just steaming. It's just crazy amounts of steam coming up. So these work really well for us for winter housing, too, which is one of our biggest problems with, with pigs, figuring out how to, how to kind of, like, let pigs be pigs, you know, through the winter and not destroy your pastures, you know, not turn the ground to concrete, that sort of thing. So... Um, that, that was our solution for it. If you look at the Google Earth pictures of our farm, you can see these kind of fleets of chicken tractors moving around the fields. And it gets way, way greener behind them, you know. So this field, we actually graze it down and put a cover crop in here. And man, this, the sorghum that we grew in the spots where the chicken tractors were was literally this high versus the other spots was like this. So, you know, it's clearly doing a lot for the soil. Obviously adding a lot of nitrogen and a lot of phosphorus, but also I think a lot of biological. <laughs> Yeah, but the dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's the other thing. They don't care about that. They come right through that. But, but the, the raccoons will come through the, through the hard fence. But the amazing thing is with the dogs in here. So we used to keep them closed completely. When when I when I butcher the chickens now. They're totally different. Like they're they're more active. You know, chicken with its right. head cut off thing. Right. They used to, you know, you would cut their head off, and when they were in basically these pasture pens that were confined, right. you know, they're on pasture, but they're still confined. They would just kind of their legs would kick, and you know, so, somewhat bigger. Now they're like popping out of the cones all the time, and like they just have more life to them, you know. Right. And so like right. people will always tell you, oh, the Cornish classic meat birds, they won't they won't get up off their butts. They'll just walk two feet to grain. <laughs> Which they'll do if they're in confinement, but like, you know, look at these guys. They're out wandering around, they're checking stuff out. So it's I think it's a much it's a much better setup for them. Feels much better to me and it's way easier to move them. We don't have to like make sure they all stay in here and chase them all back in when they get out and plug it up when there's these little holes and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah, they come back in here at night. Um, some of them sleep out in the open. Um, the dog the dogs like a, like a yeah, yeah, either that or we're getting really lucky this year. But I, I, I'm going to attribute it to the dogs. So um, when you see, yeah, when you see a bird fly over, these guys go nuts. They start running around, you know, to them and. Uh, hawks, I mean any bird, yeah, but so they're just instinctively, when something changes in the area, like if you hear something over there, they'll, all, they'll run over there, you know, but all coming down and we catch the 200 biggest ones, take them up in crates and, and process them.
and then move out from the brooder, which is that hoop house that we passed on the way down here. We move the we move the next 200 uh, out. Hey, hey, what's the matter? What you got? <laughs> All these people are in my pasture. I know, right? Instead of the chicken. Instead of the chicken. Or I guess you just got a hundred dollars. Yeah. 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 So long term, we need them to be automatic because, like last winter, was tough. It was really cold, and we had a couple spots where pipes were too shallow. You know, things were freezing, and we were just kind of hauling water. So if if you know, worst comes to worst, we just haul water from over the barnyard where we have our frost free spigots there. So, yeah. Did it? I, I didn't hear. Did the chickens stay out here? No, we're finished. Actually, we got our last, our last batch of uh, of um, small birds came uh, two weeks ago. So they'll finish right before Thanksgiving. So we don't have any poultry um, until until like February. Uh, okay, that sounds more doable. <laughs> yeah, and in February they're up in this greenhouse with in, in, with insulated breeders. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, now it's time to eat at North Mountain Pastures. Everybody's here, ready to eat and drink. Oh, man. Get done either. No. Anything that was high. You know what? It did. This head didn't get done. Oh my god.